The ghost of bereaved soul Sarah Whitehead is still known to patrol the streets and corridors of the Bank of England in the City of London. There is a tragic story behind the reported sightings of her apparition over the last two centuries. Historical accounts record that Sarah's brother Philip was employed in the cashier's office of the Bank of England in Threadneedle Street from 1797 to 1810. During his employment at the bank, Philip Whitehead was described as adopting an extravagant lifestyle which involved speculating on the stock market. Due to his possibly unethical behaviour, the directors of the bank allowed him to resign, thereby avoiding dismissal, and he then set himself up as a stockbroker. Eventually, evidence had come to light which indicated that Philip Whitehead had defrauded a company called Robarts & Co. He seemed to have used the good reputation he had acquired by working for the bank in seeking favours from his former customers. Around that time, there was a great deal of social anxiety around the replacement of bullion with paper money and the new forms of credit circulating. Forgery was a capital offence, and unfortunately, Philip committed multiple crimes of what was known as forging an acceptance to a bill. He was charged with forgery and attempts to defraud and went to trial in 1811. He was found guilty of fraud and hanged at Newgate in January 1812 at the age of 36. According to accounts from that time, well-meaning friends kept the news of Philip's conviction and execution from his sister Sarah, with whom he lived. They even moved her to another house off Fleet Street. However, one day, Sarah decided to visit the Bank of England in order to inquire as to her brother's whereabouts. There, an unthinking clerk promptly blurted out the horrific news of Philip's crime and cruel fate. Upon hearing the shocking disclosure, Sarah became mentally unstable and, according to accounts, every day for the next 25 years, she would appear at the bank asking for her brother. She became known for the shabby mourning attire she wore as she rambled through the city streets or loitered around the bank while muttering to herself in impotent rage. Her peculiar clothing consisted of a long black dress and a black crepe veil worn covering her head. The heavy black garments earned her the nickname the Bank Nun and also some sympathy. Sarah would sharply accuse the bank authorities of robbing her, and it was said that the city merchants took pity on her and usually extended some financial assistance, while the directors and clerks of the Bank of England would also frequently provide sums of money to compensate for her loss. However, Sarah became convinced that the bank was withholding an immense fortune from her, which led to her frequently hurling insults at them during business hours. In one account, banker Baron Rothschild was going about business dealings at the stock exchange when she suddenly accosted him. She called him a villain and a robber, accused him of defrauding her of her fortune and demanded the £2,000 he owed her. He responded by giving her half a crown and a promise to give her the other half the next day. Sarah accepted the money, thanked him and went away. Her daily visits to the bank continued until 1818, when the directors became frustrated by her daily disturbances and offered her a financial grant. This was on the condition that she never again visit the bank. According to historian Rebecca Nesvet, the bank's bounty did not save Sarah from destitution, as there is evidence that she may have been admitted to workhouses multiple times. In life, Sarah abided by her agreement with the bank, but in death, her ghost has broken it many times. After her death in 1841, Sarah was buried in an adjacent old churchyard, which later became part of the bank's garden court. Shortly after her burial, the black attired bank nun was seen again and has continued to appear. She became a regular sight encountered by the clerks working in the bank at the turn of the century. Many of them claim to have seen the distraught spectre as she searched for her long-lost brother, with one stating that he had seen her in the old graveyard gardens, sobbing and pounding a stone slab with her hands. Although the bank has now relocated all the former graves, Sarah's ghost has continued to be reported in the streets around the area on many occasions. 
according to bank employees, more than one late-night walker making their way home along Threadneedle Street has been surprised by her sombre apparition appearing before them. With downcast eyes, the bank nun spectre inquires sadly, though politely, have you seen my brother? She is also sometimes sighted by staff and commuters at the nearby bank underground station. Station workers have reported seeing a woman unusually dressed in black from head to toe. When approached, she simply asks, have you seen my brother? Then walks away, leaving them with a sense of grieving and hopelessness. Other witnesses have seen Sarah walking around outside the station before falling to the ground sobbing, then vanishing. A viewer of an online forum gave an account of when he witnessed Sarah's ghost in 2001. He saw her standing on the bank station platform crying as he disembarked from a train. When he approached to see if he could help her, she vanished. The man had not heard of the ghost, but a railway employee told him all about Sarah Whitehead. Around the same time that Sarah's brother Philip was working for the Bank of England in Threadneedle Street, another employee was very concerned about the fate of his own remains after his passing. William Jenkins worked in the bank for nine years in the late 1700s and had a very unusual worry that preoccupied him. The man was six foot seven and a half inches tall or 202 centimetres. This was much taller than an average man at that time who would have measured 5 foot 7 inches or 170 centimetres. Jenkins was very concerned that because of his height, his corpse would be stolen by body snatchers after his death and sold on to surgeons. They would pay good money for subjects for dissection or anatomy lectures in medical schools. The usual going rate for a skeleton of Jenkins' size in 1798 was an amount of around 200 guineas. Allowing for inflation over the last two centuries since then, that would be equivalent to about £30,000 in today's money. Jenkins was suffering poor health in the weeks leading up to his death in 1798. After his passing, Jenkins' friends asked the bank for permission to have his body buried in the bank's secure garden court. They argued that the garden court would be the safest place for him due to the risk of being removed by body snatchers. This was something that they said had caused him to be considerably disturbed in his mind during his final days. The bank directors granted the request and Jenkins was interred in the garden court very early one morning prior to the start of the working day. The Bank of England was completely rebuilt during the 1920s and 30s and Jenkins' lead coffin was discovered when the garden court was excavated. Along with the other coffins that were unearthed, it was moved to Nunhead Cemetery near Peckham in South London. However, Jenkins' coffin was found to be too long to fit in the vaults there, so it was arranged for it to be placed in the catacombs in around 1933. 